All right, uh, let's get started. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, thank you for coming to our session, our Kepler update. So uh, I'm Chats Chiba from Navi Research, and uh, today we're not going to talk about the Kepler and the Kepler itself, and also there are some project update on the deep dive on the recent topics. So, all right, so let me get first for the um, briefly introduce or some of our introduction and the motivation and also the what's going on in the Kepler deployment over the last couple of months or last years and what's going on next. So, all right. So before I jump into the Kepler, so, you know, all know about the sustainability is a top interest, the top con uh, concern about your companies, right? And uh, this kind of the sustainability topics is rapidly growing and focusing on the many organizations. And uh, the, yeah, you know, the CTO, CEO, everyone want to in introduce or the sustainability future in their products. And uh, that's behind that, right? So why they want to know about their, to focus on their sustainabilities? Is there uh, that, that there are many reasons? Is there many kind of the climate changes happen in the world? And then, so we want to reduce the global um, emissions and the gas, right? So that is the requirement for the government and the companies and the, what they want to track and uh, all of the energy consumptions and the carbon footprint reductions, right? So that's uh, behind one of the reasons. Right. So, but uh, the, the almost of data centers is consumed over many watts. Right. It's, you can imagine the 200 and the 500 terawatt hours electricity is. I we cannot. I cannot imagine. But uh, it takes a very huge resources uh, in the data centers. I heard it's uh, coming almost same of the Australia's uh, the day uh, usage. Right. So really big uh, usage. Um, the, at the same time, it's also the, the data centers, what's the uh, data center using for the, these energies, right? Uh, the, it's time order uh, computer energy problems is real. Uh, the, we know many GPUs running on the, uh, the data centers and, the, and the many AI workloads consume so the data center energies, especially for the GPUs. Um, chat GPTs and creating uh, some uh, large language models and consumes many GPUs all, all over days or all weeks or maybe they're over the months continuously. That makes a lot of their energy consumption in the data centers and also the, as well as the inference workloads also consumes. So the growing their demand of the resources, computing resources, and the AI workloads, inferencing, training, that, that makes a lot of their power uh, pressure to the data center, right? So to solve that, we have two options. Uh, one option is creating a new hardware uh, to reduce their um, energy consumption as much as possible. That's the one key thing to solve the, uh, to tackle address this energy problem. The another thing is their software, right? The software, we can reduce or optimize our workloads and then decide that where is good for the sustainability or uh, energy uh, carbon, reduce to the carbon footprint. That's the uh, reason why we are, want to develop the Kepler. So, so let's move on over to the tower sustainability computing topics on cloud. So. I just defined four things to optimize, the, realize the uh, sustainability computing here. So it's not uh, only for the sustainability topics. It's common in uh, many workers' performance of uh, and on the crowd. So four steps, the quantification, assess, optimization, and autom automation. Quantification is uh, capturing and uh, tracing over the metrics of the power usages or the workloads and the ca uh, gathering and put together. And that's uh, say, uh, the say quantification. That's the main part of the Kepler, right? Uh, the correcting the power metrics and the gathering. Then assess. Assess, it means uh, just identifying the host spot and uh, taking the next actions for the, for the, for the workloads or users. That's kind of part of the assess. And the optimization is uh, so something based on the assessment result 
we can uh, try to consider where we should put all the, these workloads. Uh, that maybe there are another zones or another countries based on the carbon emissions reductions or power resource usages, where it comes from or the power, right? And the energy solar energies or some other data so, uh, power sources. Uh, that's kind of the scheduling or uh, workload documentation topics is happened in here. And the after that, we will do that in the automation. We are the crowd native, we are here in the crowd native cons, uh, Kubernetes con, so that's the way to the how to make it happen uh, automatically, uh, reconciling loop. Uh, that I defined, uh, we defined the four steps for the making sure that that's be computing. So to, to do that, uh, the, we have still required uh, several things, how to create, create workloads, energy containers, running on the clouds, that's the basic questions. And uh, this kind of the stuff is already happened, but uh, we want to correct the matrix, but uh, we don't want to put much uh, overhead that that's continuous. So we want to reduce the overhead as much as possible. That's the next questions. And uh, the, if we have, yeah, it's bare metal machines. We have the power data source. We can correct the directly read the power usages, but uh, what if we cannot see the power source in the cloud? You know, it is common in a cloud environment. It's running on the VM, doesn't expose anything to the VM. So to how to do that? How to do deal with what did that or that things happen? And uh, yeah, and the fourth thing is the uh, question is identified where does it come from, the power consumption divided. So you're using the 100% of the system, it's definitely is coming, your bots, but uh, the crowd or open source Kubernetes running various users running on the, on the sharing the same nodes. So right. So dividing the divider that for the, for the users or continents is also important topics for that. So Kepler, uh, Kepler is so to, to solve that we develop, we are developing the Kepler. Um, the Kepler is now in a CNC of sandbox projects uh, being the, the last June and getting a lot of interest in recent trees and uh, the many features, right? So that, but uh, just said, or the focus on the, some part of the feature of the Kepler. Uh, we are collecting metrics from process, continuous, continuous level metrics, um, C group uh, resource usages, and also the uh, gathering the power uh, resource, resource usage from GPU, CPU, DRAM, and also nodes and also power metrics from the GPU, CPUs, and nodes, and so on. Uh, that then put together and reporting. And uh, it's also running on you know, Kubernetes, and also the OCP, OpenSea as well, and the bare metal, VMs, whatever. And uh, we have the standard remote, so we can run just installing the Kepler into the red uh, as a standard mode, and uh, also at that power, uh, some part of the libraries depend on their architectures. So we have to also support x86 and Linux. Z also supported. I'm still in the next <laughs> features, but uh, that we are thinking about that. Okay, so to reduce the overhead, we have enabling and uh, empower the eBPF features then to reduce overhead and uh, to to seek and or provide the VM's power metrics, we are pre pre preparing the power models in the server to expose and train the models in the base, uh, based on the past histories. That's features that we are providing right now in the Kepler. So, uh, yeah, actually we have uh, many roadmaps in the, yeah, let me briefly introduce the recent update on the histories of the uh, project Kepler. Um, Kepler itself is born in the early February uh, or end of the 2021. Uh, originally, the Red Hat guys uh, started up to this project, and at the same, almost same time, we joined uh, the, this project and to accelerate the develop on the uh, making a, a lot of research work uh, for this project. Um, just, we just highlight uh, some of the key features we provided at the later talk. Uh, the make, make sure that some training model and preparing the model servers and also how to identify the idle power, uh, right? And uh, what else? Anything? Uh, yeah, is also the being the CNC sandbox project, right? 
And now on the next OpenShift, we will release the Kepler as a techno technology preview. Uh, that is uh, real, so we, we, yeah, that's really good, uh, our Kepler project. So that is a kind of the recent history, the roadmap of the Kepler. And we also provide uh, yeah, a lot of the ecosystem of the Kepler, rely on, rely on the Kepler, so uh, to again uh, realize this quantification assets optimization. So uh, some part, for example, exporter, model servers, and the database, those are the quantification, so the basic feature of Kepler, right, and also the Kubernetes, uh, sorry, Kepler dashboards, or a Graphone dashboard we provide, and the operator is automatically setting out everything, and the Kraber or Pix, that's kind of the stuff is for the optimization based on the Kepra metrics to allocate or to decide the right places for your workloads in or in on your Kubernetes cluster. So that's, uh, yeah, we are growing uh, our ecosystem of Kepra. So, let me just jump into the, a lot of uh, a few demos. What is happening inside of the open seat of the Kepler? Uh, might be a little bit small, but uh, just yeah, we can uh, provide any helm or operators. So easy to set in up the Kepler into your environment. Yeah, just click and install and setting up the uh, small uh, Kepler custom resources. It's a very few uh, option. Uh, we have many options, but uh, we can customize first what you want, uh, turning off or uh, enable uh, over there some future of the Kepler. And uh, after gathering uh, the, some metrics or power metrics, we also have the uh, integrated OpenShift dashboard to show the what's the actual usage of the of the your workloads and power usage of the workloads, right? And I can see there's some uh, spike or yeah. You know, and also, one more thing, for the, I've been preparing the, some Kuban, uh, sorry, uh, Graphon dashboard to show what happened in your clusters. You, as you can see, uh, the, we have there some meters of the carbon emission. It's just a demo, so we have we can change the coefficients based on their some uh, environment or requirements, right? But uh, we can calculate, dynamically calculate it or your uh, carbon emission as well and also show where it's come from and uh, where's the most um, pain or uh, heavy usage or of their GPUs or CPUs or packages or memory, so, so on. So all stuff is we are correcting and it's showing the kind of the uh, dashboard right now. <laughs> all right, that's all stuff uh, I want to talk about uh, some, some stat, uh, first phase of the Kepler, and the next, Marcel, you want to go next? Hello, oh, I'm working. Um, uh, I'm Marcelo Amaral from IBM Research also, and I'm going to continue the explanation here. So um, we have been working on Kepler, as Chibosan mentioned, uh, for the last uh, almost two years already. So we have increased, you know, implemented different features, fixed a lot of bugs, and Kepler, it's uh, becoming stable and getting a lot of attention. And just to say here, we support basically two use cases. One is on-prem, when Kepler is running on bare metal nodes. Another one is when it's running on top of virtual machines. The difference here are some bare metal nodes that doesn't expose uh, real-time power consumption. So when we are in the bare metal, we have uh, hardware sensors and we can collect the real-time power metrics from uh, some specific resource, for example, CPU power, memory power, or GPU power, or the node power. On VMs, typically, it's not expo exposed right now on public cloud providers. Maybe in the future, it will be exported that so we can use. Um, uh, the only power metric that we can collect typically right now is the GPU because the GPU we have passed through and we fully have access to the GPU so we can access the GPU utilization. But CPU and memory, it's not exposed, so we need to use some power model to predict that, which I'm um, going to detail a little bit, uh, but power model is created through regressions of data that is collected from a bare metal node. 
Okay, so this is the Kepler architecture. Um, just to give more information how things work. So um, Kepler estimates the power consumption for the process. So we collect the resource utilization of each process. Uh, for example, the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, the GPU utilization. And we collect the power consumption of the resource, the CPU uh, power consumption. And we use the premise that it's general, we use it in, in all uh, research papers, actually, this premise that 10% uh, of the CPU, if a process is using 10% of the CPU, 10% of the energy consumption of the CPU, it's associated to this process. So it's as simple as that. Of course, uh, CPU utilization can be determined by different metrics, isn't it? So we have a instruction, cache, many things, but the assumption is, general assumption thinks about the a process using the a percentage of the resource, the power, uh, it's the same percentage, linear, linear relationship by that with the energy consumption, the power consumption. And by doing that, so we use eBPF to collect uh, resource utilization metrics, both CPU time, and uh, harder counters if we are on bare metal nodes. And we also collect some, for example, page cache hits, some map to, to understand some memory operations so that we can also um, create the power models uh, if it's needed or just use the harder counters when we are on-prem and associate that to the energy consumption. Um, as we were mentioned, like multiple times, uh, we collect uh, power metrics from the bare metal nodes from different APIs. For example, x86 has the, uh, Intel has the RAPL API that exposes CPU and DRAM power consumption. Uh, NVIDIA GPUs also export that. And uh, we ha uh, normally the motherboard has sensors and we can use the CPI API or IPMI also. It's also commonly used to collect the power consumption, the node power consumption from this motherboard sensor. Uh, if we are on virtual machine, it means we need to use a trained power model that it's generated by regression. So we run a set of workloads in a bare metal node and by collecting this data, we, uh, we perform some regression algorithms to create a power model. Okay, um, this is just like a, a simple way to see uh, how Kepler is deployed in different use cases. As I was mentioning, bare metal, it has directly access to the sensors in the hardware. On VMs, it typically only has access to the GPU uh, power consumption, so it needs to train up our models to uh, estimate the energy consumption of other resource. And, um, yes, uh, sorry in the wrong direction. And uh, there is a third uh, de uh, deployment uh, approach, which is some pass-through. So for example, if you are in the, in the private cloud, maybe in the future, public clouds can also support something similar to that. But its capper can run on the bare metal, um, uh, estimate the energy consumption of the VMs using the real-time power metrics from the sensors and expose that within the VM. And in this case, the, the another Kepler that it's running on top of the Kubernetes that is running on top of VMs can have access to this power metrics and then it's, uh, associate that to process containers and pods later on. So uh, this, the third one is, again, so it's the user has on-prem uh, environment that is creating virtual machines, so a, a private cloud can have this use case, and maybe in the future cloud providers can also move to this. Okay, so uh, now it's just some updates from the project. Uh, we have uh, updates related to the bare metal deployment that I was showing before. So uh, during this year, uh, we have enabled the concept of idle power with its gen that, uh, you know, well uh, accepted during the research community. Idle power is basically the power that is consumed in the node without any resource utilization. So if nothing's running there, there is still some power that is being consumed there in the machine. 
the dynamic power is the power that is related to the load. So it's dynamically increased according to the load. So it means we need to, to and uh, according to the GHG protocol, we need to divide the constant power consumption, which means as the idle power, which is constant, okay? Uh, divide the constant idle, po idle power based on the size of the applications to be a fair distribution of this idle power. So that's why it's another motivation to separate these two, uh, these two different um, powers. So the idle and the dynamic. And uh, not going to have too much details here, so, uh, but basically if the idle power will be constant, uh, it's very hard to see here, but considering the, the blue, it's the colors, right? Yeah. So consider the, the blue parts here. So there is like a minimum power consumption that happens to the node to the source and the dynamic part. So this minimum power consumption is the idle one that we separate. There are different separate that. Right now we estimate the minimal power. So we watch uh, the power consumption from a, a period and get the minimal power. But we are going to improve that later to also estimate the the idle power using some um, uh, regression analysis so that we can say, okay, for zero resource utilization, this is the power consumption of this resource. Um, and then uh, some, uh, yeah, so uh, the bare metal node also, we have the capillary standalone support for now. It, this is specifically uh, important for as I was mentioned before, if we have this uh, VM pass through, so we want to run Kepler standalone and uh, collect the VM power consumption, and expose that. Also, um, is, uh, there we have been discussing that through the community. There are some use cases that for the edge computing, which uh, is some some edge device not running on you know, a Kubernetes uh, a Kubelet daemon there, so it needs to have like some uh, standalone daemon to expose the energy consumption on those devices. So the standalone comes from that uh, motivation. And, and also we, we have been developed that to collect the power consumption of process. Then we can aggregate that to containers, pod, and VMs based on IDs of this resource, of this instance. Okay, so for the VM, um, when we are in the, on the VM, uh, on the VM uh, environment, the power model that I mentioned to you is trained power models. And to estimate the CPU power, it's more directly. So we can have the CPU utilization, like CPU time, and then do estimations. Memory, it's more complex, isn't it? So memory allocation doesn't mean memory operation. So application can allocate a few gigabytes there, but it maybe it's not using read and writes on that. So it's more challenging to have a power model for memory, okay? And memory is, has a lot of, all we know that it's, it's complex because it has virtual memory, it has cache. So memory, it's very complex to analyze. However, we can have some metrics to give some hints of memory operation, especially if the application is doing call through the operation system. For example, it's using virtual memory. So applications that are using virtual memory, we can have the page cache hit through a BPF matrix and associate this memory utilization. Um, and uh, this is one metric that we enable in, on Kepler. For performance uh, optimization that we have done inside Kepler, okay? Um, we have identified through the community that C collecting C group metrics had a lot of overhead. So uh, a BPF matrix, a BPF is designed to run only on the kernel space, not user space. Because of that, it's also very efficient, low overhead, so it's easier to collect metrics. C group open files, so it's has uh, in the user space, so it has a lot of overhead to collect C group metrics. And in this case, uh, there was a use case for real-time kernels, for example, that was complex to uh, read in C group metrics because it has overhead. So uh, we are using 
uh, container D library to collect C group metrics, and we compare that run C libraries for for uh, C group in version two has lower overhead, and then we actually are using two different libraries for different, uh, you know, if it's C group version one, container D is better. If C group version two, run C is better for performance. Um, and then Kepler is doing support in that right now. However, we modified everything, as I mentioned, collecting C, even though with the optimization, collect C group metrics is still like has overhead and we can rely on eBPF metrics. And uh, for that, again, we support different use case, but for the main general use case, we can disable the collection of C group metrics if uh, the system can support, uh, you know, all the BPF metrics collection. And in this case, we can uh, also reduce a lot the overhead. So we can see here by cre creating here um, uh, many uh, Kepler replicas here, uh, the, CPU, the total CPU utilization, it's much lower when we disable uh, some C group metrics. And which actually it's good for lower footprint for Kepler. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing that happens is how often Prometheus collecting metrics. So the default uh, configuration from the, the default configuration for Prometheus is collecting metrics every 30 seconds. Um, by design, we have implemented Kepler in the beginning for low granularity for that. Prometheus was collecting every three seconds the metrics from Kepler and Again, so after uh, discussing also with the Prometheus community, they were uh, recommending to increase this, the scraping interval to reduce the overhead in Prometheus and overhead in Kepler because every time that Prometheus is communicating with Kepler also is generating CPU utilizations in it. So uh, we, we also changed the default uh, 30 seconds and we have done also performance analysis to see if it's, uh, important to change that or not. So, and the overhead, when we increase their 30 seconds, it's also uh, much lower. For the future works, uh, we are, right now Kepler exposed Prometheus metrics, but we have some work going on to expose open metrics for open telemetry, especially for edge uh, use case that we were, I was describing before, because edge Typically, it's relying more on open metrics right now. And also open metrics, uh, it has trace information, so it gives more uh, flexibility and more information in general for monitoring things. Um, and uh, we are going to, so to even further reduce the Kepler overhead, so it's already low, but the idea is to have as low as possible, isn't it? So there is a possibility also to introduce the idea of, uh, we are already implementing that on Kepler, it's working work in progress, the eBPF is sampling rate. So uh, eBPF is collecting metric, but we can skip some metrics, you know, uh, it's, uh, let's say the, in, during the context switch, it's collecting, uh, you know, thousands of, uh, you know, informations per second and it skips some of the collections, it's typically fine, you know, but it's an again, so by having sampling rate, we also need to uh, measure the impact of that in the occurrence. So it's already uh, ongoing work on inside Kepler that. Uh, the VM pass through scenario that I mentioned before and the idle power that I, uh, through regression that I, I also commented before, it's our, um, Next, there are much more things going on, so I just list this few these things here that I consider important to mention. So uh, Kepler, it's a growing community. There are many companies now contributing to Kepler open source. Those names here are the ones that uh, create pull requests and uh, on the open source. There are more names, there are more people that this, uh, contributed to design ideas, to discussion in our community sections. Uh, their names are not here, so sorry if I'm missing them. Uh, some people here, and this is just to illustrate uh, all the people, all the companies that are contributing to the Kepler code. Yeah, finish. So questions? Hi, 
Has there been any uh, performance benchmarks between, say, running Kepler on a bare metal node, then tossing some VMs on there, putting Kepler on top of the VMs on the same bare metal node, and then seeing sort of the margin of accuracy there? But yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have different ways to validate the, the, the occurrence of the energy estimation. So on bare metal, we, we, where we can have like the, the energy consumption of the, you know, measure the real-time energy consumption, we can have some delta of some, of some scenarios. What I mean is we have one scenario run one application, then another scenario run the same application twice. So the incremental power is the power of this application that it was added to the node, okay? So by having this delta power, the estimation that we are doing with Kepler should be something close to that. So this is the first way. For virtual machine, what we can do is we have the power model that we, are, we created, and then by having the data of this, for this application, that is running on the bare metal, it has this dynamic power. When we are running the virtual machine, what's the dynamic power that is estimated there? And then we compare that. Hi, uh, question about like, do you have any plans to also add this uh, matrix that you are uh, gathering using Kepler to inject into some sort of uh, scheduler extenders for Kubernetes to do like power or like workload consolidation, for example? Right, so we expose, uh, export met, uh, Kepler metrics to Prometheus and Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, can get metrics from Prometheus. So it's, there are some uh, plugin, uh, scheduler plugins that can be doing that. So the project that we mentioned, PIX, is actually doing that. So it's adding uh, a plugin to the Kubernetes scheduler, getting the power metrics from Kepler, and doing some uh, scheduling decision based on the power consumption. So um, one of the slides you're talking about the eventual ability to run Kepler like on public clouds, right? And expose the metrics. Um, I, I'm a little skeptical of how long that would take. And I think that um, the, the trading model I'm just curious if there's been any interest from the cloud providers to help train those models for you. So then that way you don't need to do it on, you, know, you get kind of as close to their bare metal as possible. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, what I'm saying is we thought about two different scenarios. One is, as you mentioned, so it's actually the main part that we create a power model and the, the cloud providers can provide that or some companies can help. Actually, Kepler, we have this concept that we ask the community to help with that. So different companies could also, they have like bare metal nodes. If they have bare metal nodes, they, they have something. They could train power models and make it public. All the power models that we create in Kepler, it's public. We have a, a GitHub repository that is power model database and it's, it's there, so everyone can, can use that. So because the power model is dependent of the CPU architecture and the CPU model. Different CPU model has different power consumption. So we ask the community to help with that, yeah. Interesting, thank you for that. Um, and one, I saw uh, on supported architectures, 390X, S390X, is that mainframe? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. It's right. IBM Z. Uh, machine, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. We still have one minute if someone <laughs> wants to comment or ask something. Okay, so uh, in any case, uh, I ask the, the community, you know, again, Kepler is a growing community. I ask people to join our uh, Slack channel is the CNCF Kepler uh, project, uh, the, the Slack channel. We also have bi-weekly meetings. Everyone that wants to comment something or, you know, uh, if has some doubt or some uh, interesting use case to show us, to ask us, it's very welcome to, to contact us through Slack or in our bi-weekly meeting. Yeah, thank you everyone.